welcome. And yet again, I smiles all around classically. Gentlemen, the, the stress on your faces will not deter me. It only fuel my stress. <laughs> <laughs> the moment you made that prediction, I knew it was over. The moment you made it, it has to yeah. go. It had to go this way. It's going to be tough. It's just so free, dude. It's so free. <laughs> <laughs> Every right now part. it's only one actually so You're we're right. still in play we're still in play <laughs> yeah, things have still yet to continue but as but as they get more and more games my muscles only expand <laughs> before we get into that let's talk a bit about that game curry i'll start off with you with your initial thoughts yeah so i think like the game plan kind of went great for taco gaming their bot lane even despite the early death they got ahead the game was really skirmish heavy not necessarily by Taco Gaming's choice, I think 100 was actually mm -hmm. pushing the tempo a lot, but that favored the composition that we saw from Taco Gaming, like Trundle and Silas and Nara, these champs, they do like to fight the Aurelia, the Azir, these champs, they want to stay in their lanes, they want to play slow. Mm -hmm. um, and once uh, Taco Gaming got that bot lane lead, like their bot lane actually pushed it very well. They kept getting ahead, they got solo kills. Um, and then once their team got ahead mid, they just kind of exploded the game and the game just kept going. They didn't stop, right? They're very aggressive on objectives. They kept like, they didn't slow it down and it's hard for 100x to recover exactly that and 100x though veteran we're saying that this was almost exactly opposite from what we expected mm. within this mm. game yeah i mean normally it's the opposing team is the one that makes the mistake that pushes too far and they get capitalized on by 100 thieves but this time 100 thieves were the ones doing the early invades doing the engages trying to find the fight and being denied and that's in spite of the composition that was very 100 fees, right? Like here you have the Poppy, you have the Azir, we have six on both. This is a team that could definitely disengage. You don't even have that tool on Poppy right now. You do have that tool on Azir, but you have them extending. This is a play that can work if you're thinking about it as we make a fast play and get out and use your very temporary priority difference uh, versus Taco Gaming. But instead it has to be a long play because neither Azir nor Irelia nor Poppy has damage against that kind of trundle that's, that's stealing all the resistances off of the poppy and is going to extend out the fight. And in extending out the fight, you got wave resets on top and mid, his team was able to come in, and you've blown all of your cooldowns now getting the initial kill. They just find free food, free meat, and that gets them an advantage that they otherwise would not have been able to get. At this point in the game, the advantages were on the side of 100 Thieves. They'd managed to cheese their bot lane into a decent lead, but you know, this is where the game started to collapse. You even saw bot lane get a 2v2 kill there at the same time. But this was all on 100 feeds. They were the ones pushing in. They were out of time. And Taco Gaming were the ones that punished. And they kept doing so at every single instance. Now, now, uh, Curry, you are, of course, you know, a LCS coach. Bit massive brain. You've helped some of the best, the best in the world. Thoughts on Trundle? And fighting against one when you're level six and he has ultimate, you know, just quick, uh, quick. Idea. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've worked with the Troll King Santorin, the best trundle, so I, you know, I've seen what that champion is capable of. And the thing you don't want to do is just like jump onto him, especially as a poppy. And I think he was just able to buy so much time for his team. Yeah. Um, and really just like give what they wanted. Like trundle, he kind of wants people to engage and jump onto him. That's what he wants. Hundred mm -hmm. Thieves didn't have to do that. Like. Your lanes are pushing, they're in good space, they're in good states. You can just get vision, allow them to keep winning their lanes, but they're trying to go after the trundle and just let him skirmish. Like, that's exactly what he wants. And then Silas came over, he's stuck in lane, but now he's able to skirmish. That's exactly what he wanted. And I think I do also have to give props to like Shochi for like, you know, playing well on the Silas, like getting ahead. I think we've seen mm -hmm. it previously. Like he is very good like at setting up, um, like once he gets ahead, like setting up for his team, being very proactive, like starting mm -hmm. these skirmishes. And I think like, this was a really big like point for him where suddenly he's out of the Azir lane, he's ahead now, he's strong, his team can play around him, and now he's dictating the pace of the game. Um, and him and Trundle controlled the game really well from there. Mm. And as somebody who used to one-trick Trundle during the rain top meta, yay. But <laughs> <laughs> veteran, yeah. thinking about control and such, this right here is yeah. exactly where the game decided to end. 
I mean, imagine 100 Thieves if they were able to play their full one disengage setup. Instead, Fnatic goes in, blows his disengage ultimate. Azir is then taken out the fight by Shochi. That's the last full engage ultimate that they have. Otherwise, all you have to engage are just your bodies. And they try to get Irelia in. They try to get her resets. They get Senna ult on top of them. But now it's only the side of Taco Gaming that has all of the crowd control. There just isn't the burst damage, there isn't the engage, there isn't anything that they have for this kind of scenario because it's a composition that's designed to let Irelia split push and to hold midsection in that format. And there, when they're thrown out of their element, you see this isn't an invincible team. They are off on these timings. They don't understand how to approach this fight. They're not taking everything into account, like Shochi stealing Poppy Ultimate there. They are desperate there when the enemy team is allowed to get ahead and they're not allowed to play their own formation. Within that formation, Taco Gaming found the cracks. And uh, something you said right there it was key right there, Curry, uh, because uh, Shochi, mm. the name that truly defined this entire game here. Yeah. And I think, like, one of the things that I talked about too in like, the pregame was like how important it's going to be for Taco Gaming to push the pace of the game. And, like, that's why I love that Baron play. Like, they see Aurelia bottom, they know she has to TP in, they make her TP in, and then they are the ones who have so much, like, because they're in position, they're on Baron, they can dictate how the fight goes. And like, they didn't just farm it out. They didn't just sit there and wait for something to happen. That's what 100 Thieves wanted, right? Like they just want to keep farming. The rally is in the side lane. The second a rally goes bottom, they pull the trigger mm -hmm. on the Baron and they make 100 Thieves react and, and they just outplay them. Like, Xeer gets knocked out of the fight, has to TP in and Shochi just like amazing that fight. Like, played really well. Continue to do so right now, but it is time as we take a couple of seconds for a reflection here. One of these, of course, they're not just down and out, it's just game number one, all right? But, you know, better, realistically, is it just a matter of overextension or is there more to the problem? I mean, I think this, they've managed to find a way to throw 100 Thieves off their game. But, you know, like Curry was saying at the start, it did feel a lot more like 100 Thieves were throwing themselves out of tempo here, throwing themselves out of work, opting into these bad situations. I'm hoping at least what we're going to see in the next game is that 100 Thieves went back to the drawing board, were like, we do know how to play these, we are going to be much more disciplined about it, and play their own game again. Because I still believe that that composition, if it was allowed to have any kind of a tempo and play its 4-1, would have been very good into the composition they were against. And you could already see the cracks in the opening rotations. City Witty didn't know how to punish that poppy cheese gank really, really early on. All you need there is just links to not lens i mean not to move forward and offer himself to the enemy team and bot lane maintains that advantage the rest of the game so i think there's a lot here under fees can take and be encouraged about um this isn't game over we were all wrong or something like this yet um so we'll see how we go in the next game We'll see, and we still do have a little bit of time, right? Uh, it's only game one, but of guys. course, I'm not going to try to get too ahead of myself for now. But what I will do is I'll pass it off to my bald brother and my, and of course, and of course, my hairy compatriots, Smacks and Desrux. All right, the bald bros, that's what we are now. We've gotten upgraded from the, the golden boys to the bald bros. I'll take it for now, but... <laughs> what a performance, Max! Taco Gaming, game number one. Everyone, everyone, pretty much everyone was saying this was going to be a 3-0 for 100 Thieves next. They were just going to squash right through this one. Taco Gaming, what happens when you doubt them? They show up. <laughs> hey, look at that. We we have more believers this time around. I actually didn't oh, see this. Oh, they're converting. Grapes and Regdor joining the Taco Allegiance. Everybody else, you and I included, still sticking with the Thieves um and you know it is still a best of five 100 thieves certainly could come back from this but that like, I, like we were saying before that game not really that close and everybody on taco gaming really came into their own and found victory all together as a team now that's the thing about uh this series in particular it is a best of five Best of five is a completely different experience as opposed to any other regular season. Even a best of three in that aspect, you have more time to adapt, to adjust to what is going on. And it really does, uh, you, you know, you do have moments where it does feel like a war of attrition, a war of mental when it comes to these long con games. If this was a best of three, then Taco Gaming would be on match point. And that is way more mm -hmm. pressure onto 100 Thieves next than they are currently experiencing because they do have that extra safety blanket of another game. So yeah, that's just... One example of how things are wildly different. One thing that is the same, though, is that Taco Gaming are staying on that red side as 100 Thieves did pick blue once 
more. And that gives Rovex the same counter pick if he wants it once more. We saw that both teams were really keen on picking their top side of the map earlier into the draft, and Rovex used that counter pick very well. Uh, I'm curious on those first two picks that we're going to see from Taco Gaming. Last time, Hunter Thieves really did prioritize that Azir to grab first. I don't know if that's going to be the same case onto this one. It, it really wasn't the most stellar thing when Shochi was able to get that Silas. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think Shochi proved that he knows very well how to play into the Azir. And with the different order of the bans here from Hunter Thieves next, this could be something where they want to ban that Silas away considering the incredible performance. And yeah, there it is. This yeah, opens the yeah. path to that first pick Azir if Darkwings wants it. So we'll see if that gets locked in. The band that's going to be sacrificed, however, will be Draven. You know, Taku Gaming love to grab that one, Gorka especially. That does get left up. Uh, oh, actually, I completely missed that. Draven's already banned away. It's Karthus who's yes. still going to be up. <laughs> yeah, that's still a big deal, though, for City Witty. He has been really powerful on that Karthus in many, yeah. many games. And, you know, I, I do want to point out City Witty in specific, as he has been one of the biggest carries on Taku Gaming for the majority of their time together as five players. That last game, he really didn't need to do that because the entire rest of the team was performing so well. I think relative to his team, that was one of the quietest games that we've gotten from City Witty, which seems like it might've gotten him a bit bored as he's gonna insta-lock <laughs> the Karthus and go for a carry performance. All right, all right. It, it was quiet earlier. Now it's about <laughs> to get loud. I mean, the Requiem, that's what it is, right? We're just going to sing our song and watch the rest of the thieves get clapped right back to the respawn. See if he can make that a reality onto this card. There's already spicy picks coming out of Taku Gaming. So that will be paired up with the Akshan. Yeah, Akshan going up to that top lane into the Gnar. This is a Lawrence special. This is one of those champions where I see Lawrence pick it. And even though he sometimes struggles in the lane, I have faith that he's going to do very big things on that champion. It's one of the only ones where I I know for a fact that he's going to have an impact on that game, but specifically early game. And this is something the 100 Thieves Next have already prepared to play into now that they have a very heavy scaling bottom lane in the Zeri and the Yumi, very mobile as well. Yeah, the Kitty Cat getting locked in alongside Zeri. Now, this just opens some interesting jungle picks you can go. Zeri does complement uh, picks such as Udir, such as Xin Zhao, that can be picked up on the side of 100 Thieves that they want to run with that type of setup. The first bands come out, though. Taco Gaming are going to attack Darkwing's pool, not going to allow him to have uh, that team fight presence that he usually does have in Lissandra that he's been picking a lot this split. Yeah, Lissandra, typically very nice into these these AD champions as well that are very frail, like the Yone and the Akshan, that you kind of have to pick when you go for a Karthus in the jungle. You don't want any other magic damage on your team when you're playing Karthus, just to make sure that it is really unfortunate when they do build magic resistance. So, I like the way that they're drafting this quite a lot. Uh, and continuously, Hunter Thieves are going to have to ban the way the Pike as well, because again, that's physical damage. That's something that Karthus really likes to have on his team, and it's something that Rovex proved to be very good at. All right, a straight attack onto the mid lane pool. They're going after Darkwings. Lissandra and Ari both going to be moved off. Now, Taku Gaming, you were talking about the magic damage, the damage types, and everything. Not much of a front line here. This is a scrappy composition thus far. So I want to see what else is going to be picked up when it comes to those solo lanes. I mean, we don't have too much in terms of engage. Yone has great engage if he can get that team fight going for you. Uh, the support pick is the one I'm most curious about for Taku Gaming. Yeah, I think it's pretty likely that we just get a run back of a Felios here from Gorica. It doesn't like really feel amazing into that Zeri, but Gorica is so good at it that it doesn't really matter. And even saying that, when you do have Purple Gun, it does feel amazing into Zeri because you can actually lock her down. So I'm, I'm glad to see that from Gorica. Like you said, it's really going to be all about that support pick for Rovex and Hunter Thieves. They have to do something to prepare or whatever shenanigans Rovex has in store for us. You mentioned the utility from the jungle that Fnatic could go for. It is going to be the Xin Zhao, so still a lot of that front line, a lot of that uh, utility and, and crowd control that you get from auto attacks, like that Udyr that you called out, and it's going to be really powerful. The only thing that you need now is magic damage, and Darkwings is going to deliver. Yeah, there it is. We have a Kali. <laughs> oh, this is... This is a bloodbath, Max. This is going to be a bloodbath yeah. game. I, 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 I'm going to start off with a question. I'm not even going to get into the analytics. Are we going to get a kill per minute once again? <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, Gotta see us. Yes. Gotta see us. Absolutely. <laughs> we we both watched the last game. Taco Gaming almost got a kill a minute just on their team. It's gonna happen. Ooh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Robex! <Okay>. Boy! <laughs> we got the cinch in the support role coming out for Taco Gaming. The big guns being pulled out by Robex. Okay, so this is not a troll. This is nope. real, and it's it real is good in this matchup also, Deserex, because <laughs> if you drop the goop down, Yumi cannot attach to anybody, nope. and then you just flip her, and the cat's dead. The cat can never, ever detach in this lane, ever. So this is, this is a really, really strong, very specific counterpick into the Zeri and Yumi lane, it's good into the rest of the team as well. Getting the point click flip onto something like an Akali also helps a lot. And the goop there, it, it works into all of these champions. I really like this counter pick. This is, this is on brand. This is on yeah. brand. That's all I can really say for Taco Gaming. This is the kind of uh, really chaotic draft that we expect out of them. My word, is this going to be a bloodbath? I, I, I do got to admit, though, I, I, have, uh, I have much more likings to what 100 Thieves next have drafted. It's a little bit much more traditional. It, it's much more easier to execute in the grand scheme of things. So we are ready to hit the rift right now. Game number one, going over to Taco Gaming. It is a best of five, though, as 100 Thieves next look to bounce back. Yeah, the biggest difference maker when you talk about 100 Thieves composition into something that Taco Gaming has just drafted for us is that all of these champions do need to play in closer quarters than something that Taco Gaming wants. You don't really want the Nar, the Akali, the Xin Zhao to be on top of you as any of these any of these characters, really. You've got the Akshan, the, uh, the Aphelios. They both want to play at a much larger distance than something that 100 Thieves Next is, uh, is really hoping for here in this game. So that's the biggest difference. If 100 Thieves Next can close the distance onto both of these marksmen, it's going to be a lot easier for them to play throughout this game. But again, that is why I like this singed pick so <laughs> much, because that champion makes it so awkward to actually do that into. You're playing into the poison, you're playing into the goop, you're going to get flipped. It's everything you could possibly be afraid of as these champions that want to engage. I mean, you go for the back line, suddenly your vision's upside down, you're moving slow, you can't dash anymore, and Rovex is just spam and laugh. Mm -hmm. That's how Singe to do. It'd be one of the most frustrating things to have to fight against. It's Taco Gaming. Okay, going for a little bit of an invade right here. Fnatic's oh. gonna spot it out. Has the combo of the Yumi with him, and this is gonna be a three on two. City Witty trying to head for the hills, trying to bail out, but he will be, unfortunately, the victim of First Blood. And letting that kill go over to Sniper in the top side. You saw that Fnatic not even finishing it off. Man, that ward that you can see right there in the middle of your screen right now. Not spotted by City Witty Sweeper. He used it just a little bit uh... too late. And that is the reason the 100 Thieves next are able to get in there and surprise Taco Gaming. They had no idea that they were spotted. And you know my favorite thing about this is Deserex? What? The best thing is that Sword knows how terrible that lane is for him, and he just didn't go to it. He just went <laughs> to help the jungler at level one as Yumi because there is absolutely nothing that he can get done in the bottom lane against Singed. It's smart. It worked. Fnatic gets a kill. Well, not the kill. Going over to Sniper. And I, I, I want to bring that up now because... Sniper with the lead. Again, he's been one of the best laning top laners we have. He gets monstrous leads. Big differences at 10 minutes, at 15 minutes. And now he has an early kill. Now he has early income into this Akshon matchup. Diddy-witty. Spotted again in the enemy team's jungle. This time, a lot more backup here with him. They've brought this yeah. in. Who does not have flash, by the way. That is a big difference because Rovex did use it to try to get Lens out of that lane very early. You can see that reflected in the CS numbers at the bottom of your screen. Um, so Revex, he, he does still have the Hex Flash, but it's a lot more dangerous for him to play into that. And so they, they will actually walk away slightly empty-handed. They don't get that red buff. They don't get any of these kills that they were really looking for to try to combat that early, early kill onto City Witty. And uh, yeah, I mean, 100 Thieves next, they're, they're going to keep coasting here. Now Lawrence really shoving in this wave and getting priority towards the top side for Taco Gaming. 
Um, priority is something that's definitely going to be oh. needed. It's the style oh. that we've seen from Taco! Lawrence! He just died, General Sniper! He's out! A 1v1 <laughs> solo kill once again, Smax! What did I say, Eric? What did I say? He is the carry player on the auction. Anytime that he gets this champion, I know he's going to perform. Say what you will about any of his other champions. Whatever you do, do not doubt the Lawrence auction. You will pay for it, and Sniper has just done so. Oh, Lawrence. Lawrence, Lawrence, Lawrence. He's been in the scene, grinding it out for a while. Comes against this newcomer, Sniper. Standing up to him, just bring your best shot. Even with those stats, <laughs> even with all those performances, he's able to show up. And now Shochi looking to show up against Fnatic, chasing him out of the jungle of City Witty. Good chunk of damage there. We'll chase him out. Mm -hmm. Fnatic, even at level 3, very resilient here as Shochi doesn't have any damaging items. So, gets to walk out. Oh man, I'm still reeling at the, that solo kill top lane. Yeah. I cannot believe... That uh, that sniper is is falling victim to it as well. Even with all that hype up that I just gave to Lawrence's Shochi, mm. may also find himself dead. Going for the sidestep here, City Witty shows up. Ah, the tick goes through. Ignite will net a kill for Darkwings, and it's a sad way to go down. Just slowly burning, but Darkwings getting that kill over in the top side. It will be a hunter thieves, slowly winning out in some of these trades, but only very slowly. Nothing too major acquired yet. Mm. Taco Gaming. Oh, oh wait. Oh, hold on. Oh, oh, Robex. Okay, okay. We're just going in for it. Gorka starts to run low. Robex Ooh. is going to hold the oh. positioning. Lens flashes forward and outplays the bot lane of Taco Gaming. Robex watching poor Gorka hit the dirt. Forced to just watch this minion wave crash. That's one thing about Singed. He does a lot on the offense in this lane, but defensively, you can't do a whole lot. You, <laughs> you just kind of have to watch as your bot laner falls. This hex flash is very creative though. You're able to get all of this all this crowd control on top of the Zeri. And it's with the root too, but yeah, <laughs> the heal is early, the damage is there, and Gorica, he even knows as well. He knows he has to flash, but it's too late. He's already still in range of that Zeri. Very well played in the bottom lane, 2v2 by 100 Thieves. Yeah, Rovex trying hard with the body block, but Lens, smart, smart. Just flash right through it, get the kill onto Gorica and put this lane behind, get the Zeri and Yumi lane going. We knew it was going to suffer early. It did quite a bit on those early pushes, but now still starting to win out the grand scheme of things against Rovex is Singed. Mm -hmm. Taco Gaming, they've taken a few hits. Nothing they can't come back from, as evidenced by game one in this series. We'll see when and if that does happen in this game, because 100 Thieves next. I know these guys. I know that they are not going to go quietly into this series. They do not want to take all of these losses. They do want to prove themselves again as the best team on the amateur side of things in this entire year. We already talked about how successful they've been the entire way through, winning two of the three entire tournament qualifiers so far. This would be the third of theirs if they can win it. And going 19-1 and one in the open qualifier games all throughout the year as well. These guys know what it means to win. They know how to win. They just need to prove it today against Taco. And somehow this is proving to be a tough opponent. Now yeah. we have Taco Gaming pushing towards the spot side. Lots of priority established over there. Darkwings is looking to roam down. Dragon being started by City Witty. You will be able to secure it. Now, Taco Gaming, they've been one of the better ones when it comes to Dragon Control, usually because of this situation, right? Gorica and Rovex will have priority down there. City Witty is able to play towards it, and this nets a lot of Dragons going over to Taco Gaming. Still utilizing those neutral objectives, utilizing that control off that prior they established. I want to talk about that a bit more, too, because it's so unique in a lot of the teams that we see, even at the professional level. There aren't a lot of teams that put that heavy of an emphasis onto Dragon. And part of that is because some, some leagues around the world are playing on the new patch where drakes are more durable, but mm. a lot of it is because bottom lane early game isn't something that you can really rely on in a lot of instances in a lot of games. You think like some of the best bottom lanes in LCS, things like uh, like Evil Geniuses, Danny and Vulcan, they've been doing a great job, but even they don't put a really high priority on those early dragons quite like Taco Gaming does, but... They've used that transition that they can very reliably get every single game and turned it into this late game win condition 
kind of twofold, right? Because eighty carries yeah. are the ones that scale the best as well. It, it goes hand in hand, and I really like the way that they've acknowledged that in their game plan. Fnatic catching out City in his own jungle. City forced to burn the flash, gets caught by the three talent strike. Here comes Rovex. Out comes the goop, but it's not enough to save City. Rovex now returning fire, but City going into that zombie form. We'll return a bit of damage. Rovex gets the kill right back at Shochi, turning into the lane. Oh, wow. Now fight breaking oh, into wow. the top side. Lawrence is going right after Sniper. The ultimate <laughs> is off. And again, for the third time this series, Lawrence 1v1 Sniper. I mean, talk about comeuppance here, Deserux. These guys have had to upset every single matchup to get here, and Lawrence finds his second solo kill of the game against Sniper. After last game, doing it also, like, Lawrence has killed Sniper in the isolated 1v1 three times in two games. Who thought that was going to happen? Absolutely nuts, and now the play coming out from Rovex, but Rovex gets chunked right out. Lens will get the kill. City Witty showing up into the bot lane, will put up the wall of pain. Now the focus is on the sword as Gorica gets a few autos, but has to back off because look at Darkwings waiting in the wings. Lens returning fire, and this is the hopeful spot coming out from 100 Thieves right now. Lens in this bottom lane is able to outperform Gorica and Rovex. Lens needs to continue doing all of this work on the scaling matchup. He is that shining light. 400 Thieves next right now. And all that scaling, he is that marksman, and he has the Yumi as well. This really incredible synergy that we see from Zeri and Yumi together, and from Lens and Sword together. They've been building yeah. their oh, duo yeah. synergy all throughout this last couple of tournaments, all coming into this where they're able to get these 2v2 kills in lane against our best laning duo twice now on top of Gorica and Robex. Yes, it's an unconventional lane that we're witnessing, but that doesn't take away from the fact that they are still finding these very valuable kills. And this is to give all the credit in the world to Lens because this Proving Grounds coming up is going to be his first Proving Grounds. He's mostly played in Tier 2 Amateur with the UPL. It's a big jump to go from UPL to PG, a self-contained tournament to a pipeline, to a pathway, and he's handled the jump so well. His mechanical play back from his Ginger Turmeric days, it's still there, but it's been expanded on and has led to this fantastic uh, KDA he's able to pull out in a lot of these games and outstanding laning stats to match. You can draw some similarities with Lens and Soul recently on TSM yeah. as well, mm -hmm. where they, they both played a lot of UPL games for, I, I say a lot, it was really only like a couple of months in there, moving into amateur, playing on an affiliate roster, and all that's left for Lens is to make that next step. Maybe in this next year, we'll see Lens make the move up to Academy if he can keep these performances up. Seems likely to me as Hunter Thieves Next, very good track record of promoting players up to that Academy next step. And you know, maybe if he gets super lucky, just like Sol, he can move up to LCS and take a win in his first week against FlyQuest. We'll have to see as we put our attention towards the topside sniper. Once again, the recipient of a lot of pain coming out from Lawrence, Ooh. but this time backed up by City Witty. Oh. And sing your song, City. The Requiem drops onto Sniper, and he falls for the third time this game. Lots of play from Taco coming into that topside, but 100 Thieves next. Now looking to focus for a bot lane dive. Harold's going to go down. Wind becomes Lightning. Only able to do some chip damage, but they're looking to take this tower. Could go down eventually, as there's just no way the top gaming can stay here without the pressure. They're looking. Oh, good. Fnatic. What? He's by himself. That was oh. a questionable play to come out of Fnatic. I mean, you're still going to get the tower out of 100 Thieves next, but uh, a little bit of a misstep there. Kind of uncharacteristic play coming out for Fnatic. Yeah, very much so, as Sniper oh. is dead. Wow. Oh, he gets a trade kill. Okay, that's, that's not nothing that he gets the trade kill, but he did teleport to his doom. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it. A trade kill's nice, but yeah. think about what you're losing right here. This minion right. wave gonna be gone. You've lost your teleport. You just got back to lane to instantly die, and you gotta walk back. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what's going on here, Deserux. I mean, hundred these decks, they seem a bit frazzled right now oh. with the both plays underneath turrets, one friendly, one unfriendly, both equally as questionable, <laughs> and. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm is, really is, concerned at this look, for sure. Is there a curse here? Is, is it that 100 Thieves next, when it comes to the second circuit qualifiers, that this is where they're going to slip up? We saw it in spring. They slipped up against Merrillville and didn't get to the finals there. They're in the finals here, and Taco Gaming are looking like the better team, which is absolutely shocking. It's true. Taco Gaming, they're, they're really ramping up. 
in this tournament. And it still feels great for them. They're still doing a lot of it themselves, but you can't deny the the shakiness that we're seeing out of 100 Thieves Next, the uncharacteristic shakiness that we just witnessed on our screen. Hopefully they can shore that one up so we get a more competitive set of games here. Because again, Taco Gaming, they've rest control of this game just like they did in the first one, securing themselves a second Drake, moving toward another soul. It's looking really solid yet again for Taco Gaming. This is wild, Smacks. This is absolutely wild. It, it, it's clicking to me right now that there is a reality where Taco Gaming beats 100 Thieves next and becomes our first seed in Proving Grounds, something no one was expecting. Here they are. They've taken game number one. They're even in game number two, leading with Drake's, and getting a lot of income onto Lawrence. The reality is getting closer and closer. And you thought that Lawrence was scary in lane as well. This is a champion that does quite a bit he has really big spikes early early on depending on the matchup you're playing against but now he's kind of just like a more mobile twitch he can roam around in stealth the stealth is permanent as well and if you ever slip up he will one shot you out of stealth with all of his one shot damage especially if he has the ignite up he's just an assassin lying in wait with that perma stealth yeah. you have to be super super careful when playing against an Akshan that is spiking with these items. All that Taco Gaming needs to do to activate that is get him out of the top lane state. But to be honest with you, like he's not losing that right now. He can just stay up there and give all the gold to the rest of his teammates, which is a perfectly serviceable way to play out this game as well. But it is something that Hunter Thieves Next is going to have to think about come like 20 minute mark, 25 minute mark. General Sniper typically has a 1k gold lead. At 10 minutes yeah this is wild this is absolutely wild he just finished his mythic while lawrence has been done for like i i, I want to say the better part of four minutes at this point that's how much of a gold lead we've got if we can take a look at the gold on top of that one because i do want to see just how much uh how much of a difference that we've gotten throughout this game because my word my word lawrence's performance on this top side all the plates he was able to collect and the plays that are being made from taco Ooh. gaming are not done just yet because they're focusing on to sniper We'll get that Meganar form. Rovex not able to get enough done onto Sniper to guarantee that kill with the Requiem. But the pressure, it's the plays being made by Taco Gaming and the defense out of 100 Thieves next. Let's see if this response play can work here for 100 Thieves. They're looking for some damage on this mid lane turret. Uh, not going to get quite enough there. The map movement is too strong and City Witty doesn't even need to be there for that top play to get all the damage down with the Requiem. Matic has been spotted. Well, Rovex taking an interesting route here as Gorica gets exhausted. The chase on the Gorica will force his flash out. Now Len still trying to hop onto him. City Witty is going to provide some defense, but going down will be Gorica. So will Rovex. Now Darklings and the rest of 100 Thieves next looking to set up into this jungle. Uh -oh. Lawrence is on the wings. Lawrence has a lot of damage. So does City Witty. But 100 Thieves next. They've already got the bot lane of Taco Gaming. It's the first step to recovery. Mm, this is how you activate that lead that you got in the bottom lane. Lens is participating in a lot of these kills. You have assassins on your team like this Akali. This is a good step in the right direction here for 100 Thieves next as they do find two stragglers in the jungle. Like I said before at Taco Gaming, they haven't quite figured out the best way to set up these lanes. And Lawrence, he hasn't been able to activate that assassin mode that we know that Akshan really can do. So 100 Thieves next, they take advantage of that. And I want you to keep in mind, uh, there's a lot that's sneaking up for 100 Thieves next uh, to their benefit. Uh, the Akali, Darkwings, two kills so far, already has his Mythic finished off. Now, stopping him would be absolutely huge here. So Lawrence, the rest of Taku Gaming, going to try and get their attention onto Sniper and Darkwings. The solo laners here for 100 Thieves next. Unable to finish out, but that is a power point. Darkwings on this Akali. You have another one with Lens on Zeri, yet to die as well. Two kills apiece. That's the good news for Hunter Thieves. The bad news is that a Drake is coming up in 50 seconds. They have still uh -oh. yet to secure one for themselves, and Taco Gaming are doing a great job stacking those up. If Hunter Thieves next can get those scaling elements online right now, then that could be big for testing this Drake and actually finding themselves a big team fight, activating that AD carry that they have really powerful right now. His lens. He's really strong. He is way stronger than Gorica right now, who does have a Gale Force, but not a lot of damage in comparison to the Yumi-empowered and buffed-up Zeri. So, let's see what Lens can do in this exchange. Now, 100 Thieves next. They do have some good team fight. General Sniper, 
he does get in the right position, that Meganar can be oh so huge. And he can pull that off. He is mechanically very, very confident. Uh, we had Academy Media Day not too long ago, and most of the <laughs> Academy squad said, uh, General Sniper, we'd love to duo with him because he's pretty much free LP gains. He's that good. <laughs> One of the best prospects he could really have here. Ooh. And now here comes the engagement out of Fnatic. A brilliant Crescent Guard separates Taco Gaming and 100 Thieves next. Off to the races on this team fight as they'll clean up four. They lose one in the prospects to the Requiem, but Shochi is not long for this world. 100 Thieves next. Snap back with an ace. With a snap engage as well. A swift snap of his fingers and Fnatic sets up three members of taco gaming on a silver platter that's a fine meal if you ask me Ooh, fanatic yeah. brings it over to his team with a flash ultimate and everything goes smoothly from there again activating the ad carry again bringing the assassin into the light dark wings and lens are online let's see it let's see it let's see it i gotta see it again Fnatic, look at this timing, flashes in three of them, completely Ooh. separated. Ooh. Wow, Fnatic, it was the R flash too. Oh yeah, it was. He started the swing before he even activated the flash. Beautiful stuff. You can't even react to that if you do it fast enough, and that's exactly what Fnatic does. Dies gloriously on the field of battle <laughs> for his team. Fnatic is here, the veteran on the roster, bringing them into the lead yet again. And Deserux, we may have that series on our hands. You need Fnatic to clutch it out. And he finds his moment. He's done it before in the past. He was taking games off Academy teams before it was cool. Back in Resolve against Immortals. Academy on top of that one. Fnatic showing up here for 100 Thieves next. Brilliant outplay to come out. And starts putting the pieces in position for 100 Thieves next to take this game. Because I'm looking at that mid lane. And that is a fed of Kali smacks. Mm -hmm. We're starting to see the dominoes, the 100 Thieves next set up in that draft, fully fall down one by one as well as Sniper. Oh, he gets revenge. Ooh. Sniper gets his revenge, a solo kill. Fine going the way of Sniper, but 100 Thieves next collapsing onto Morris. They'll find Robex as well. It is falling apart. This is where 100 Thieves next thrive. This is what they've been looking for. This is again what I was about to start talking about too, the draft 400 Thieves next. It's all about getting on top of these vulnerable, less than mobile carries that want to keep you at range. Taco Gaming, they're finding a struggle to keep them away. Oh, Fnatic with a deep dive followed up by Lens. This is pure aggression. You give 100 Thieves next to lead, and the moment it plays towards their win conditions, it will snowball out of control. The momentum they have right now is not stopping. Oh. Ultimate going to be used by Shochi, just barely dodging out of the wind becomes lightning. You got to give 100 Thieves next so much credit. Oh my word, as Lens what? finds a solo kill mid, you got to credit them so much here because they looked mentally boomed earlier in this game you remember the play that we saw Sniper underneath especially. the bot turret underneath the top turret on both sides of the map really everybody looked like they were fully struggling to get a foothold into this game and keep their mental strong but they're coming back into this game with incredible plays and lens oh this just looks so easy for You're him kidding oh, oh wow spot on positioning simple pick coming out for lens 505 at this moment all the carries now getting fed for 100 thieves next and with no real established front line it's going to make it harder and harder the deeper we get into this for taco gaming because they need their tools to be the first ones to engage see that lawrence is uh has decided that it is time to play some twitch gaming he finds the enemy to carry all right oh all right onto oh lens my. onto lens but a lot of healings coming out from the yumi and Lawrence can't finish off the job, but here is General Sniper, and the Nar bar is active. Fnatic gets the kill onto Lawrence, and now Sniper sees Rovix, pulls him right back in. You're going nowhere, buddy. He will take him down. Unstoppable is Sniper. What a comeback performance. You were talking about that mental boom. I mentioned it in the top lane, Smacks. It wasn't looking that good for Sniper, but here he is six kills later. Somebody has given Sniper one hell of a morale boost. Is Gorica? Oh boy. Oh, Dark Wings in the middle of three. <gasps> gets an assassination. He's going to get the outplay. Oh, the kill's gotten picked up. Chochi will net that back. But Lens is holding the line, making sure that City Witty and Chochi 
get nowhere near this area. Gotta pick them off. 3k health remains on the Baron. City Witty would have to make the hero play. His flash is available. Will he go for it? Over Whoa. the wall. Gets the flash. It is low. It is low. Can he get it? Answer is gonna be no as Lens will pick him off and Fnatic secures the Baron. Ooh, it was close. You gotta respect City Witty for going for that play. You gotta respect Lawrence for trying to make these assassinations happen because Taco Gaming, they're realizing that this game is falling away from them and it is falling fast. That is a full Baron from 100 Thieves next. Everybody except for Dark Wings is wearing purple and they will be able to start taking down all these structures, start denying these drakes further form from taco gaming who have a really solid soul win condition but they can't actually get the soul if they can't get into the drake pit without dying the baron pit just proved that to us it's really difficult for city witty to do that hunter thieves next are again continuing that stride that we saw them find just a few minutes ago now taco gaming they're trying to find a foothold back into this game they see it in the bottom lane going after sniper excuse me dark wings but already going to take the recall as he doesn't really mind if too much pressure comes here because he's looking mid lane. He sees what's happening for 100 Thieves next. It is a simple push as another tower goes down in the bottom lane. Sniper gathering a wave over there. And Taco Gaming, they're feeling like their window is closing. And it very much is. They fail to find more engages. Now Lawrence in the bottom lane going to pop the ultimate. All the shots going on to the tower. Ooh, Jumping woo! in! Dark Wings will hop right back to Lawrence to get the kill. Requiem will be sung, oh. but Dark Wings does <laughs> fall. The Leandri is doing its job. And they die together. But Lawrence <laughs> dying means there's a lot less pressure that Taco Gaming have to apply onto Hunter Thieves next on the bottom side of the map. I gotta point out, Dark Wings, that ah, sure can flip this filthy. I cannot believe he landed that Absolutely. through the heroic swing. Really nicely done here from Dark Wings. It's everybody on Hunter Thieves next that's bouncing back in this game. I, I, even if they don't win, I want to interview them after this just to find out who gave the pep talk because someone had to do it. <laughs> it's a hard job to be assigned, but when you do it this well, you got to have just so much credit from your team, and I know that somebody did it well. They look so revitalized, man. Yeah. And it was mid-game. It was mid-game yeah, that was. they kind of snapped back into it off of one play. They saw Fnatic. And that was the hero mode right there. Once he did that, everyone else was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He can't be the only highlight reel. I got to one-up that. And now the rest of 100 Thieves, they're putting on single show highlight reel, single lane highlight reel, single player. Sing uh, the whole team is putting on the display. This is a real-time game, too, Desirex. You don't get any pauses. You don't get any breaks. You don't get any timeouts. You just have to go. There's no stopping in League of Legends to catch your breath and get revitalized. Not like any any sports like, like football, volleyball, whatever you want. You no just keep out. going. Pedal to the metal. If you die, you respawn, and you get right back out there. And that's what 100 Thieves Next are doing right now. Bringing it all right back keeping us a kill a minute and diving on the enemy jungler. Oh, City's gonna go down. What do you think of this play right here, Smacks? Because look at Taco Gaming. They were trying to set up the bottom wave, looking to get another tower. But with City Witty going down, they can't defend their own base. 100 Thieves are just gonna charge. Gorica using the Gale Force to back out. It's another structure falling. 100 Thieves next, second inhibitor they have claimed. And off the play, Taco making the gamble to try and make bot lane a reality, 100 Thieves Next get two inhibitors. Unlike Taco Gaming in the last game, 100 Thieves Next do not try to end the game right now. They take the safe route. They know that they have this game in the bag if they don't go for any of these coin flip plays. That was very rude of you, Dark Wings, I'm not gonna lie. Forcing Fnatic to uh, get hit by the, the Raptor, stopping his recall. Not a very good teammate move, if you ask me, Dark Wings. We're gonna have to have a chat about this afterward. It's not the type of camaraderie we're looking for. <laughs> betrayal. Looking a little sus. Jokes What's aside, going on here? they're doing a great job. Again, as a team, bouncing back in this game. Two inhibitors down. So much lane pressure at their disposal. They have an 8k gold lead. They might want to just wait for that last Baron to spawn so they can secure that one for themselves. Look for some more team fights. They know that the end is upon them. Fnatic bought at a full elixir, for goodness sake. They are fully aware that they are bringing this game to a 1-1 score. And you wait out the Baron, 
and inhibitors will still be down. So you can set up that bot wave. Get a simple siege leading in these uh, super minions. Taco Gaming, they can't wait for the Baron. They gotta find a fight earlier, and they're looking for it onto Sniper. Meganar Bar ticking away. He flashes. He will be ha he will be having access to that one. So he hops in and slams him against the wall. Hundred Thieves next. It's that easy. Even off the engage of Taco Gaming, mismatched when it came to the amount of players that Hundred Thieves were bringing. Ooh. The gold lead is mismatched. The power is mismatched. The hands are mismatched. A hundred thieves next will clean up three. Will clean up. Up four and take game number two bouncing right back from that domination of taco gaming no baron needed deserex hundred thieves next are in the base five members strong and this game is over what a comeback from the thieves to get through the mental block get through the rough early game and mid game to make it here to take the second nexus of the series and make it a tied up game we we're going to game three we're going we into a game three now coming down to basically a best of three between these two teams what a back and forth match it really was because in the early game it was feeling taco gaming sided lawrence was out matching her which was completely mind-blowing on that aspect but hundred thieves they are resilience max we talked about the experience difference from some of the players in hundred thieves next with the veterans on their team we saw that sniper, he was really struggling in that early lane. We saw that Lens, he was making up for that. He was getting a lot of the kills in that bottom lane and they both came together. They both became those carry forces in the late game. Experience be damned, they are here to win today, Deserex. And they completely turned it all around, turned it on its head, found all these plays together. That's what put, puts them here right now, getting a win in the series. All right, it's taking us to just a best of three between these two squads one one apiece we throw out those two games and we're bringing it to those championship rounds we're going to take a moment to take a break take a breather as we get ready for those championship rounds more of taco gaming versus 100 thieves next coming in just a moment as we toss it over to ravish in the analyst desk